Hi guys, welcome to Katernix Corner. My name's Terry, and in a previous video we did about my brooder setup, we briefly touched on uh, hatch rates. Uh, yesterday I received a shipment of eggs in, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to go a little bit more in detail on hatch rates and why you may not be getting a good hatch rate and what you can do to improve those hatch rates. Uh, hatch rates is nothing more than the percentage of eggs that hatch out of a given set. So say you set uh, 50 eggs and 25 of them hatch, you got a 50% hatch rate. There are a lot of factors that can affect your hatch rate and probably one of the biggest ones is egg fertility. Uh, if the egg's not fertile, it's not going to develop and obviously it's not going to hatch. Um, other factors include uh, incubation temperatures, uh, humidity, uh, age of the eggs, and whether or not they were properly turned while they were in the incubation process. Okay, so let's go over each one of these factors a little bit more in depth. Uh, the first one being fertility. If you've got young birds that have just become sexually mature and you notice breeding behavior in their cages, um, you may see the male chasing the hen around and he may mount her, but he may not actually be inseminating her. Um, in this case, what you're going to want to do is give the, the rooster a couple weeks, even up to a month, uh, to perfect his technique before you start collecting eggs from them for incubation. Another big one is the ratio of roosters to hens. Um, you never want to go over five hens per rooster, preferably three or four. If you have too many hens and not enough roosters, the roosters won't be able to service all the hens and you'll end up getting some infertile eggs. Okay, and the second one is incubation temperatures. Um, in a forced air incubator, you want to set the temperature at 99.5 degrees and in a non-circulated uh, incubator like some of the hovabator models, um, you want it set at 101 degrees. Uh, you also want to have a couple good thermometers that can monitor the temperature throughout the incubator. Um, the regulators are known to be off a degree or two, so you want to set this up prior to placing your eggs in for incubation. Okay, the third one is humidity levels. Uh, the consensus online seems to be between 40 and 50 percent during the first 14 days of incubation and then bump it up to 65 percent uh, during the lockdown period. Um, I'm in South Florida and our humidity levels are always over 50 percent so I do what's known as a dry hatch. I don't put any water in the incubator for the first 14 days and then at lockdown I'll add about a cup of water to the tray and uh, that always seems to work well for me. Okay and the next one on the list is the age of the egg at the time it's set for incubation. If you collect eggs over a several day period, so you have enough eggs for incubation, just keep in mind that the fertility rates decline pretty rapidly after 10 days. Um, try to keep it under seven days and you'll, you'll get a better fertility rate. Okay, and the last one on the list is turning the eggs. Uh, the eggs need to be turned several times a day during the first 14 days of incubation. This helps to prevent the embryo from sticking to one side of the egg. And this can be done using an electric egg turner, or you can do it manually by hand. Um, after lockdown, uh, you don't need to turn the eggs anymore. You can also have eggs that go part way through the incubation cycle, and uh, for whatever reason, they just stop developing and die. Um, whether it's a bacterial infection, or an issue with temperatures, or the bird was just too weak, or something was wrong uh, genetically with the bird, um, it's hard to say. Uh, some birds will go full term and just die. Some birds also go full term and pip and just don't have the energy to hatch out of the egg so they die or they will go full term and pip and as they're pipping if the humidity is too low they actually shrink wrap inside the egg and they suffocate and die. So there's just so many variables that have to go right from an egg, for an egg to go from day one through day 17 or 18 uh, and provide a successful hatch. Okay, another major issue is handling, and this pertains mainly to shipped eggs. The Postal Service can mishandle the package, they can get dropped, they can get bounced around, they can get crushed, all prior to you receiving your eggs. Um, another big thing is how well the shipper packed the eggs prior to shipping. So let's go ahead and open this box and get a look at the eggs and see how well they were packaged and if there was any damage. Most shippers use foam inserts with holes cut in them that snugly hold the eggs. Each foam insert can hold up to 60 eggs 
and the holes are spaced so that the eggs are protected from each other. Okay, eggs packed in those plastic egg cartons will not survive the shipping process, no matter how carefully they're handled. Even if the egg is intact when you receive them, uh, inside the egg is an air cell that can become detached during the shipping process. And this is why many breeders recommend that you let the egg sit with the pointy end down for a period of 24 hours prior to setting them in the incubator. Uh, by doing this, in some cases, the detached air cell can reattach and the egg will develop normally. Okay, let me go over my routine real quick about how I uh, prepare shipped eggs for incubation. Uh, once they come in and I've opened the box and inspected them for damage, I will take the eggs and I'll place them on a counter uh, for a period of 24 hours uh, with the eggs uh, oriented pointy end down. Um, that's going to allow any detached air cells uh, to hopefully rise up and reattach. Also, I do not wash my eggs prior to incubation, nor do I spray them down with uh, Listerine or uh, hydrogen peroxide. I'm a firm believer that Mother Nature has already put the best antibacterial on the egg, and that is the bloom or the cuticle. Okay, so let me get the uh, incubator opened up, and we'll go ahead and set these eggs, and I'll give you a quick look at the inside of the incubator. Okay, so uh, you can see uh, here is the jumbo wilds that I had uh, placed about a week ago. Uh, these are the new eggs uh, that came in yesterday, the shipped eggs. These are Italians. Um, I got my sensor probe um, for the regulator set on the top shelf. Um, heat rises, uh, so I don't want that shelf to get any hotter than uh, 99.5. Um, the bottom rack is usually only about a degree different. Um, in the bottom is my water tray for when I uh, add water for the uh, lockdown period. And this bottle here is just mass. Um, it's filled with water. The water comes up to temperature. Just helps hold the uh, temperature in the incubator a little bit more steady. Okay, and on day 14, what you want to do is uh, pull the eggs out of the incubator and uh, remove them from the automatic uh, egg turner tray and place them back into the incubator on their sides. You'll also want to bump your humidity levels up to 60 or 65 percent. This period is known as going into lockdown. Um, you are going to close your incubator up and you're going to leave it that way until the eggs hatch. Um, the eggs can begin to hatch as early as day 17 and they can uh, hatch as late as day 20 or 21. Uh, the majority of the eggs usually hatch around day 18. Uh, if they hatch earlier than that, like on day 16 or 17, usually that indicates that your incubator was a little bit too warm. And if they hatch late, like on day 20 or 21, that usually indicates that your incubator was a little too cool. So you can make adjustments for your next uh, hatch. Okay, so the eggs I set today are Italians, uh, Golden Manchurians. Uh, to be honest with you, I have never hatched out any other color other than the Jumbo Wilds and the Whites. So if you have any tips for me, please post them in the comments down below. Uh, but I've always had good luck with eggs from uh, My Shire Farm. Uh, Zach does an amazing job of packing them. And uh, his 50% hatch rate guarantee uh, just can't be beat. So all I can recommend is that you do your homework and your research. Uh, talk to other people about uh, who they've uh, purchased eggs from and what their results were. Um, I'll highly recommend Zach over at My Shire Farms. And I'll also recommend uh, Kansas City Quail. I've always had good luck with them too. So, okay, I want to thank you for joining me today and I wish you the best of luck on your next hatch. I hope you found some of this information useful. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out and you'll get notifications on uh, any up and coming videos. Uh, good luck on your hatches, guys. Thanks a lot.